Okay, HMV, honour my vouchers or heist my valuables. And you will all know the, the sad story of the demise of one of the great cultural institutions of our time, 97 years. Um, uh, his master's voice has been uh, selling, uh, selling music and, uh, and DVDs and so on, and selling Granny the vouchers that allow grandkids to buy uh, the, the music that they want to buy. Unfortunately, um, the second Saturday, the second weekend after Christmas, uh, HMV went into administration in the UK and simply closed its doors in Ireland. And as a consequence of which, in the UK, they stopped honouring vouchers. They said it means that they can legally declare that gift vouchers are worthless. I want to ask today whether or not that claim is true. It's not. And it led to a lot of uh, unfortunate incidents in shops. On the left-hand side, we see some fisticuffs that broke out in several UK shops on the Monday and Tuesday of the week that the vouchers were not being uh, honoured. And on the right, we see a grandfather who went into HMV in um, Henry Street and left the voucher and took um, DVDs to that value in games for his grandson. Um, uh, and a lot of people did that, and fair play to them, I wouldn't try it. Um, the reason why the administrator said they weren't going to do this is because they said it would be contrary to insolvency law. We have three types of insolvency. The first type is examinership. And an, examin an examination is not that kind of examination that our students do here in Trinity. It is where the company brings in somebody to advise them on how to continue to trade and they seek the protection of the court from their creditors whilst they're doing it. The court can say in these circumstances that certain contracts aren't enforceable, but that's the only type of contract that is not enforceable as against an examination, a company in examinership, and therefore vouchers which are contracts are enforceable against companies in examinerships. The second kind of um, uh, insolvency is receivership. This is a nice old receiver. Um, and again, there is no rule that says that contracts are not enforceable as against a receiver. The third type of insolvency is a liquidator, not a liquidizer. Um, uh, although my, my niece once used that as a, as a line and I have continued to use it as the visual joke ever since. What happens in a liquidation is that uh, the bondholders get to the top of the queue, that is to say the secured creditors, and then the unsecured creditors, the people with the contracts, the vouchers, end up at the back of the queue and end up not getting anything. So once the company goes into liquidation, uh, the vouchers are unenforceable, but uh, before that, they are enforceable, unless there's small print in the contract. And unsurprisingly, HMV's terms and conditions do contain small print in the contract, and the small print says that HMV reserves the right to discontinue the gift card scheme, the voucher scheme, at any time in the event of circumstances beyond its reasonable control. And I suspect going into liquidation, going into receivership, going into examinership, going into administration really does amount to exceptional circumstances. But just because it's in the contract doesn't mean to say that it's enforceable. What have the Romans ever done for us? Well, they gave us the Treaty of Rome in 1957, and the European Union gave us the Unfair Contract Terms Directive in 1993. And the Unfair Contract Terms Directive says that certain types of terms in consumer contracts are unenforceable. And there are two examples here, both of which say if one company says we can change the terms of the contract and you have nothing to say about it, uh, those terms are unenforceable, they're unfair. So it's likely that the a uh, clause that HMV would rely on that says that the vouchers are unenforceable, that, that clause is unfair. Even if it's enforceable, you still have another remedy. One good reason to buy by credit card, I mean, the fact that you're giving away your credit rating to everybody is a different matter, but one good reason is the chargeback uh, allows you to sue the bank, to sue the credit card company, even if the um, retailer has, uh, no longer, uh, is no longer around. When HMV went into administration in the UK, on the left of that slide, uh, you saw the Twitter feed um, from the, the official tweeter who complained about uh, management. Eventually, the administrator said that they were truly sorry and that they would, in fact, honour the, um, the vouchers in the UK, but that was only because they originally thought the vouchers were worth 100 million, and when it turned out that it was a much more trivial 7 million, it was worth it. 
Um, other companies who have gone into examinership subsequently have learned from the HMV debacle. When B&Q went into examinership last month, they said they would honour vouchers. When Accessorise and Monsoon went into examinership earlier this week, and this demonstrates that I actually got my slides in late, because they should have been in before this, uh, this story broke, and I'm grateful to Ignite for being uh, accommodating, um, they too um, uh, announced they would honour the vouchers. This is a photograph um, on Flickr by Kian Ginty of the HMV shop on Grafton Street late on a Saturday night. And it looks to me sad and receding into the distance, and that's what's happened to HMV, and that's a pity. But in future, if you have vouchers from a company in receivership or in examinership, they have to honour them. They can't heist your valuable vouchers. Thanks very much.